Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by MMA up-and-comer Jake Hewn. Jake, how are you? Doing good. Thanks for having me on. Sure. No problem. Thanks for doing it. Jake, you had a fight on this season of The Ultimate Fighter against Adam Sela. The fight was to see who would make it into The Ultimate Fighter house. Uh, it didn't go your way. You lost the fight by submission due to an arm bar. What exactly went wrong for you in that fight? Was it the weight cut? Were you just so drained from having to cut all that weight to make it down to 185? Was it not knowing your opponent, the format of how they have things set up, and not knowing who you're going to fight up until about a day before? Or was it just he was the better man on that day? I, you know, I'm never going to sit here and take anything away from any of my opponents. You know, Adam's a tough kid, and uh, you know, I hope he does real well in the house. But, um, you know, I, I walk around at 240 pounds, mm -hmm. and for me to try and make 185 pounds because I think it's a great opportunity. You know, at the time, you know, I was all done own folk, and, you know, all for it. But, uh, I mean, I don't know. I'm not, not going to sit here and make excuses, but, I mean, you saw those interviews that they were doing on us, and I was like, I just, just escaped from Auschwitz. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think in the back of my brain it was, uh, you know, I wasn't my, I wasn't myself. You know, explosive and everything. But I mean, at the same time, you know, I went out and you know took him down and got stupid trying to finish him, and ended up in an arm lock, thinking, you know, whatever, I'm way stronger than this kid. I'm gonna lift him up and slam him down. And turns out the kid had some pretty quick hits and managed to flip it over on me. So, you know, I think it's a little bit of both factors. But um, I can't say I will not be making a return trip to 185. Mm -hmm. Why exactly were you down at 185? Was it because I'm pretty sure when they did the tryouts, there were 205 guys and 185 guys. Was it you tried out for 205, they liked you and said, hey, can you make 185? And you said, sure. You know, what exactly led you to 185? You know, that's pretty much it. They, uh, they had the tryouts, for, they had an open call for 205 and uh, for 85ers. And we went down and there just weren't enough 205ers that showed up. So they kept, they asked about 10 of us to hang out and, uh, you know, if we thought we could make 85, you know, guys that they wanted to give a shot to. And they ended up only keeping two of us, uh, myself and Fraser Oakey. So, and, uh, I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen Fraser fight, but he's a killer too. And, you know, you watch both of our fights and I think it's just, you know, there's a difference between, because he, he's a 240 pound guy too. There's a difference between, you know, dropping that 35 pounds to make 205. And, you know, dropping, you know, what, what ended up being about 60, 55, 60 pounds to mm. make that. And it just, um, but, you know, what an opportunity like that, but you can't, you can't scoff at it, you know. Mm. You can't, when they say, look, we're going to give you a shot to get into USC. And, you know, for a guy like me, you know, I'm at, I don't have a ton of fights, but, you know, I started out fighting for pro elites. You know, I got, you know, I kind of got that exposure to, you know, a little bit bigger show. And for me, I thought it a quick ticket to the, you know, to that type of deal, you know. And it, uh, you know, it was a gamble that didn't pay off. But um, I think at the end of the day, it's going to end up and work out better for me because I, I all out skipped 205 pounds. You know, I wasn't mm -hmm. fighting at heavyweight. Right. The, the next time, the next time I fought was at, at middleweight. I hadn't weighed 186 pounds since I was an eighth grader. Right, right. So <laughs> it opened up my eyes a little bit. Yeah, I was completely surprised when they announced the cast, or you know, the, the 28 guys that were going to be fighting in the first episode and saw your name out there, because I remember you from that Pro Elite Heavyweight Grand Prix, and I was like, this this can't be the same guy, or, or unless, you know, they did they did a 205 season, I just wasn't wasn't sure, I, I thought it was 185, and then I saw the, the name, and I was like, well, it can't be the same guy, I mean, maybe they spelled this guy's name wrong, but this guy is a, is a heavyweight, what's he doing at 185? Yeah, I think the problem is because 205 is one of those one of those weight classes that isn't real conducive to doing on that show's format. Mm -hmm. You know, because right. I mean, you know, your, your true 205ers are walking around, you know, 230, 235. You know, I mean, some of them upwards, you know, 245, and it's you're, you're not going to find guys that are going to be willing to chop all that weight down all the time, so they don't show up. They're waiting mm -hmm. for a heavyweight. Season, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, Jake, walk me through it. So when they say, hey, we want you to be on the cast, do you go right then and there? It's, it's you know, maybe a week later, you're in Vegas uh, getting ready to fight. You know, what's the timetable from when they say, hey, you're going to be on the show to, hey, you're going to fight? Oh, man. Well, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy. They, um, they keep you down there after the tryouts for medicals. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they're like, you know, they'll, they'll tell you, like, hey, you start getting your weight down. And especially with me, you know, they... um. 
I was having to send them weekly pictures of, of the scale to let them know where I was at. But they uh, they really keep you on the ropes, not letting you officially, you know, officially, officially know until, God, it was about a week, a week out. So I'm sitting there, I was having to diet and turning down without actually having the official, you know, paperwork until about a week or two out. And then they uh, they send you down there and you get in, you got to be, uh, you hit the scale as soon as you get there. The next day you cut weight and uh, you weigh in and uh, then you go in and uh, they tell you that after weigh in, they match you up with your opponent and it gives you a speech about going out there and knocking people's heads off and not fighting the safe. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and then on part day, you show up and you're in that little room and you're warming up with guys that you've never had old pads for you before or anything. And uh, it's, it's, it's very different than how you would... Uh, how you would go get prepared for a normal fight. Mm-hmm. But then again, you know, I mean, I mean, like we say, fighters fight, you know, you're going to find a way, but it, uh, it definitely, it's definitely very different. Mm-hmm. Now, when they give you the word that you're going to be on the show, do they tell you who some of the guys on the cast are going to be, or is it just completely you're walking in blind, you have no idea who any of the other yeah, 27 guys are? You have, they don't tell us anything. Mm-hmm. You're completely blind going in. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, some of us stayed in contact uh, from guys that had escaped for medical and the tryouts and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, kind of were comparing notes. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so we kind of had some ideas like that. But actually, official, real, real world knowledge from the USC or from the top people, we had no idea. Mm-hmm. What are some of the things that you've taken away from this experience that should help you in the future? Um, you know, definitely that I'm not 100, that I'm not a middleweight. Sure. <laughs> First, first and foremost. Sure. <laughs> um, but secondly, you know, that I mean, I watched myself on the cell on the, on, the, on the thing the other night, and, you know, I didn't fight like I know that I can. You know, I went out there and I was trying to fucking, uh, excuse me, I was trying to take the guy's head off, and, you know, with, with every shot, as opposed to, you know, actually fighting. So, you know, it's just, you know, small things that I, you know, and I think a lot of them added to it. Mm-hmm. I'm a fight middleweight here. I'm bigger and stronger than all of these guys. If I connect with anything, somebody's going to die. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so just little stuff like that, you know, just pacing and, you know. But I think um, I think this, this move to 205 is going to be much, much, much better and more conducive to me mm-hmm. getting the strap. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're three and two in your MMA career. How big of a setback is this for you? Because, you, like you said, if I get on the show, it's a fast track to possibly getting to the UFC. But you're still uh, such a young guy in this sport, and you don't come from you know the traditional you know Muay Thai or kickboxing or wrestling background. Uh, you know how big of a setback is this for you, or do you look at it as well? I didn't get on the show, but uh, now it gives me another opportunity to. You know, uh, sharpen my tools, and uh, you know, hopefully, uh, when I do get another opportunity, I'll be better in the future. Yeah, you know, I, I don't look at it as a setback at all. I mm-hmm. mean, other than the fact that you know, had I gone on there and done well with the quality with the quality season that they had, I'm sure I would have mm-hmm. got a shot in USC. You know, I, it wasn't all. I, all I know is that it, it's not like that. Uh, that that previous season with the uh, with the welterweights. Mm-hmm. I mean, these guys are going to be fighting in the USC. Right. Mm-hmm. The UFC is 
sure, the big sure. boss instead of where everybody wants to be. But you know what? If I could give Dream were to make a comeback, which I see they're trying to do, or you know, one FC's out there, I would no, I, I would love to fight in shows like that also. So by being not tied into that Ultimate Fighter, I have opportunities now to fight all over the world. You know, go mm-hmm. fight different guys, go fight in different countries. You know, before I before I settle in, you know, okay, now I'm in the UFC. This is what I got to do because that's what they said. Mm-hmm. So after you had been eliminated from the show, you never questioned, "Hey, do I still want to do this?" It was always just, um, you know, you took you took the opportunity that you got. It didn't work out for you. Go back to the drawing board. There was never any question, "Hey, never. I might not want to do this anymore." Oh, like, hey, I might not want to fight anymore. Yeah, but there was never that time. No, absolutely, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. I think sure. you got that reaction. You're in the wrong sport. Mm-hmm. Nobody's gonna go undefeated. I'm sorry. It's, mm-hmm. You could be the greatest fighter. I mean, Anderson Silva has losses. You know, sure, sure. It's, Now, you mentioned that you're training with American Top Team now. First, why did you decide to change up training? And second, why did you decide to settle on American Top Team? Well, you know, uh, leading up to the show, I had been uh, training for a year with Jeremy Horn in Salt Lake City. And, you know, to be honest with you, I think I just kind of exhausted the resources there. You know, Jeremy's a great guy. He's a great, he's a valuable tool. I mean, he's probably one of the most knowledgeable people in the sport when it comes down to it. But at the same time, I had a real lack of training partners there. You know, guys, excuse me, that um, they weren't training full time. Guys are in and out of the gym. They're not really taking it serious. And along around the same time, I uh, I ended up switching up my management. I'm now uh, I'm now being managed by Monty Cox, mm-hmm. who actually was um, <laughs> kind of behind the scenes control of my career while I was a pro elite and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I just never had signed with anyone. And, you know, I, I, I don't have any ill will. Uh, I can't accept the punch before that, but it's just, I wasn't fighting enough. And, you know, Monty's the kind of guy who's going to be able to get you fights and get you the fights that you need to be having. So I um, went with him, and they're, uh, they're tied in with Top Team now. So they said, hey, you want to come out here? And you want to make, you want to come out and check it out and train for a little while? Or do you want to just move out? And I said, you know, when I do stuff, I tend to go ball too. Now, you got a fight coming up February 8th for Showdown Fights. At Showdown Fights 10, you're going to be fighting Colton Vaughn. How much do you know about this guy? You know, I know he's a wrestler from Idaho, and uh, he's a tough kid. You know, all those Idaho farm boys are. And I'm sure that he's a wrestler. <laughs> mm-hmm. He'll probably try to go out there and try and take you down mm-hmm. and sure. play that whole game with me. Um, you know what? I'm, I'm excited for the fight. I'm excited to find the show people. What I can do when I'm, you know, not fighting against guys that are 285 pounds and not trying to fight at 185 pounds, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, it's going to be exciting. I can. That's the one thing I can. I can always tell people. You know, my fights. It may not always go in my favor, but they will be exciting. Is this a multiple fight deal with Showdown fights, or is this just <laughs> absolutely not? No, I'll get just it. a single fight okay. deal. I'm just. My, my game plan here in the near future is just to fight as often as I can. I want to start building this my record up a little bit because I'm, you know, I run into a problem where you know I, I don't have a tough fight, but you know, guys also don't want to fight me because they see, oh, this guy doesn't have some fights, doesn't 
the stress is tough as hell, but it doesn't do people any good to fight me. Mm-hmm. Does, does that make sense? You yeah, know, yeah, guys definitely. that are where I'm trying to get to, they're like, well, hell no, I'm not going to fight him. I, I might lose. And the record's not that great. Mm-hmm. So my the game plan that, you know, me and the management team and ATT have worked out is we're just going to have me fight as often as possible against, you know, against whoever and go out there and rack up some wins. So any promoters are out there listening to this, feel free to get at me and get a hold of my account and I will come fight. Now, you mentioned the part about not getting fights. Do you think that it has anything to do uh, at all with you're coming from the world of football, which is not, you know, that's not really a, you know, a style. It's, that's not a martial art. It's, it's a team sport. Do you think that that has anything to do with it? If someone comes in and fights you and loses to you, oh, they lost to some guy who's coming from football, and, you know, that's not a, yeah, that's not a combat sport. Do, do you feel that that you know, might have anything to do with it? That's the mentality that these guys have. They're insane. I mean, let's be honest. You're the mm-hmm. best athletes in the world are playing professional football. They're not mm-hmm. wearing pajamas out there doing katas and karate. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I don't want. I don't. I don't. I don't care when I fight a guy. I don't say, "Oh, this guy's a tenth degree black belt in Kyoku Shun karate." I mean, what the hell does that mean? Mm-hmm. You know, we're fighting in a mixed martial arts fight. It I mean, who cares what the background is? Mm-hmm. You know, it, and it's a little bit ridiculous to me that people even consider that stuff. You know, and you're not the first person who's brought that up. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I. I will go out there and physically out athlete these guys just because they've, you know, from age six been a black belt, which is a joke to me that a six year old can be a black belt or something. Mm-hmm. You know, it, does, it doesn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. So who cares? If you're that tough and your hands are so deadly, why don't you fight me? Prove it. Mm-hmm. Bellator is coming to Utah. Uh, Bellator 90, I believe that's going to be uh, late February. I think that's when they're going there. Uh, do you want on that card? You may, just, just to, oh, really? You, you don't want to? You don't want to get get? Yeah, you know, Bellator is a great option for a lot of guys. Mm-hmm. Um, I, got, I actually got some friends that will be fighting on that Bellator card out there in Utah. Uh, Josh mm-hmm. Tyler and Dave Allrad will both be fighting on it. And uh, you know, for me, where I'm at right now. I don't want to be tied into a large organization. I want to be. I want to be able to fight and go travel around the world and do that kind of stuff. And you know what? Bellator offers great options, for guys. Mm-hmm. But for me and for what I've talked about with my management, their contracts are very locked down. Mm-hmm. You know, and they don't allow for a lot of movement. And that's just not something that, where I'm at that I'm interested in. Mm-hmm. I think it's refreshing to hear because there's so many guys out there that are fighting MMA right now that are so desperate to get on to a big show that they well, they just you know they forfeit be attached to a big name. But what they don't understand is, and especially with that organization in particular, you know, just because you fight once for them, they then own you. Mm-hmm. You're going to be fighting for them for, like for an indefinite amount of time, and that doesn't mean that you're going to be fighting. Mm-hmm. That just means that you can't fight for other people. And I think the guys, especially young guys, they need to get out of that mindset. I need to be in UFC. I need to be in Bellas You can just get out there and fight. Mm-hmm. You know, I fought for the entire last year just trying to get fights. And I hear a guy that guys turning down fights because it's not on a big enough card for them. You know, it, 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 it has to be wrong. You know, you got into the sport to fight, not to get famous, right? I mean, we're going to like punch people in the face. I don't know what exactly happened to Pro Elite. They, there's been no official release of them going out of business, but all signs would would uh, say that they're not going to be around anymore because they haven't done a show since uh, a year ago. So I don't really know what their deal is. But how big of a blow was that to you? Uh, because Pro Elite was, you know, an organization that was giving you a shot and you know on HDNet giving you some yeah. exposure. How big of a blow was that That's to you? That that honestly did suck. I really. I liked fighting for Pro Elite. I liked what they were doing. You know, we were co promoting the dream. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, TJ Thompson is a great guy. I mean, he's been around forever. And he took a gamble on me. We knew each other a little bit from Hawaii. And like you said, you know, he, he put me into a, a situation that I normally wouldn't have been in. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's been rumblings and groanings about things that might be going on with them. So I guess the, the only thing I can really say is stay tuned. Mm-hmm. Sure. But don't hold your breath. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know which was Showtime leaving Strike Force. Uh, Pro Elite, they were interested in buying yeah, Strike Force. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't know. One can hope. One yeah. can hope. Yeah, I don't know, but but uh, if I had to, if I had to put money on it, I think that they are they're trying to work out a deal with them. But that's just my opinion on it. Yeah. Anyways, Jake, the Super Bowl is coming up this weekend. 
Mm-hmm. Ravens versus 49ers. 49ers, their quarterback is a guy you're pretty familiar with, uh, playing against an all whack, <laughs> Colin Kaepernick. Um, who's your pick? Are you, are you going with a fellow whack yeah. player, or are you going with the Ravens? I, I am going to go with the Niners purely because, like you said, I played against Kaepernick twice, mm-hmm. and the guy finds a way to win. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he, he does things like we, we would have three guys on him, and somehow his lanky, bandy-legged ass mm-hmm. would end up running down the sideline for 60. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's ridiculous. So mm-hmm. I, my, my, if I was a gambler man, I would go with the Niners. Mm-hmm. But that being said, it's, it's hard to not pull for Ray Lewis right now. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. my inner linebacker wants Ray to go out with a championship, but mm-hmm. I'm going to go with the Niners. Mm-hmm. I think it's crazy how Colin Kaepernick uh, flew under the radar for such a long time. I'm a big uh, University of Hawaii football fan. Don't really know why. I, I've only been to Hawaii one time in my lifetime. I've lived my whole life in Michigan, but I've just been a, a big fan of Hawaii. The, the June Jones, uh, Timmy Chang, Colt Brennan, Chad Owens, all the, watching all those guys play. They just, I just loved watching that. And I, I would always watch um, all the WAC games to see what Hawaii, uh, what their their competition was. And I always watched these Nevada games, and he was just tearing it up. It always got me worried. And so, and so yep. I just think it, I just think it's weird how uh, you know he's just uh, flown under the radar for so long. I kind of. If I can make an MMA comparison, it's kind of like Anthony Pettis and Ben Henderson. They were in you know, a smaller league, but they were doing great, and now they come over. But they were always doing great, even even when no one was watching right. them. It's just, just crazy. They just weren't getting that recognition because yeah. yeah. they weren't on the big stage. Yeah. You know, you're not playing in the SEC, so guys don't take you right. serious. Right. Kaepernick is the real deal. Right. I mean, we would sit there and watch film on this guy. People don't realize he's calling his audibles at the line in college. The guy can throw the ball 50, 40, 50 yards on a rope to the out to the to the far side. I mean, he, that's stuff that you don't see, you know, yeah. at six six and a guy who can rock. Yeah. It, so he's um, the guy's the real deal. Yeah. If he, if he's doing that at, at Florida or Alabama, he's a first round pick. But you know, no, it, he, his his he, his. He, his his greatness is, was just, you know, it was obvious. He was a freshman uh, playing playing against Hawaii that that one year, and he just he just took over. It was it was just a great um, Tyler Grunke. He was the guy who who led led Hawaii to that victory. But uh, Kaepernick, it was yeah. it was wor- it was it was scary. He was doing real good that yeah. game. The guy's the guy. Okay, he got a real long and successful career ahead of him in the league. Yeah, de- definitely. Now, Jake, my last question for you is about your nickname. How did you get your nickname, the Honey Bear? <laughs> okay. um, I was actually in Vegas uh, cornering Chris Weedman when he uh, knocked out Vanderlei Silva. Mm-hmm. And we, uh, we were sitting in the hotel room and, and uh, there was one of those little hunters and then she asked me to toss it to him for a little bit of energy. And he grabbed it, looked at it, he goes, oh, this sound just looks just like you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is that's that's good stuff. All right, Jake. Real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you would like to thank? And is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Um, you know, first off, I gotta thank everybody who uh, who follows my fights. I know there's a lot of people out there, and uh, definitely stay tuned. This year's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a good one. I got a, I got a real good feeling about things going at 205. I feel like uh, it's gonna be a big year for me, and uh, um, I got a. Sh- a signature t-shirt out on scrapsoldier.com and if uh, anybody listening is interested in getting one please get on there and uh, get you a honey bear don't care t-shirt it would help me out quite a bit Mm -hmm. Jake thank you for taking the time to talk I really appreciate it good luck February 8th at Showdown Fights 10 against Colton Vaughn I appreciate it thanks again for having me